Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the fourth video in Future Doc's new UCAT training series. And today we are talking all things decision-making. The decision-making section is often viewed as one of the less time pressured sections, as you will usually have around one minute to answer each question. But this section can easily trip you up if you aren't familiar with the different types of questions that you can get and the strategies to answer each of them. So in this video, I will walk you through everything that you need to know about decision-making to boost and maximize your score. And remember to stick around to the end of the video where I will be sharing our top three decision-making tips. So let's dive right in. As you can imagine, doctors and dentists will have to make quick decisions in stressful situations or high pressure environments. And that is exactly what the decision making section of the UCAT exam is assessing. Your ability to make sound decisions and judgments using complex information in a short amount of time. This section has 29 questions which need to be answered in 31 minutes, giving you about 64 seconds per question. Each question in this subtest of the UCAT will be an individual question. Unlike other sections of the UCAT exam, which often have a STEM and multiple questions, questions following it. The questions will often have data presented in different ways, including charts, graphs, texts and tables, and other diagrams. You will be expected to interpret and analyse the data given in a short amount of time and then select the best answer. Decision making has six different types of questions that are presented in two different formats. The first is multiple choice questions, where you'll be given four different answer options and only one will be correct. Or you could have yes or no statements. Here you'll be required to drag a yes or a no response next to each statement. And the six different types of questions that you could get are syllogisms, logical puzzles, recognizing assumptions, interpreting information, Venn diagrams, and probabilistic reasoning. Let's look at each of these types of questions individually. First up, let's look at syllogisms. These are a form of reasoning where a conclusion is drawn from two or more given or assumed propositions. You will need to decide whether each conclusion does or does not follow, given the information you are provided, and then drag and drop your answer accordingly. So let's take a look at a practice question involving syllogisms. In a university, there are two different types of biologists, zoologists and botanists. Viv, the biologist, is not a botanist. Some biologists are male. Place yes if the conclusion does follow, or place no if the conclusion does not follow. Pause the video here and try to answer this question yourself. So let's have a look at the answer. The first conclusion does follow because Viv is a biologist but not a botanist, so they must be a zoologist. The second conclusion does not follow because only some biologists are male. There is therefore a chance that Viv is a female. The third conclusion does not follow as there is a possibility that all botanists are female. The fourth conclusion does follow because some but not all biologists are male, so at least one must be female. The fifth conclusion does not follow because they may or may not be a female. This cannot be concluded from the information given. An important thing to remember when you are answering these types of questions is that all data should be considered objectively. Don't make any assumptions based on your prior knowledge. Also, make sure that you have correctly understood the question and what it's asking you. Make sure that you are careful to read the question and the answers carefully, as sometimes the wording that is used can trip you up and cause you to make a mistake. Up next, we have logical puzzles. As the name suggests, in these questions, you'll be presented with a puzzle or a game that you need to solve in order to get the right answer. These puzzles are usually presented as text, but there may be diagrams involved too. Let's have a look at how this works in practice. W, X, Y, and Z are playing football in the garden. One of them breaks a window by mistake. W says, it was X. X says, it was Y. Y says, it was not me. Z says, it was not me. Which one of the four must be lying? Again, take a minute to try and work through this puzzle yourself. The correct answer is option B. X must be lying. This is because from the information given, 
we can deduce that W is telling the truth, X is lying, and Y and Z are telling the truth. W cannot be lying as X or Y would also be lying. Y cannot be lying as W would also be lying. Z cannot be lying as X would also be lying. So B must be the answer, X is lying. This diagram gives a visual representation of this. Keep in mind that some parts of the question might be irrelevant. Try and figure out if this is true for any parts of the question that you are presented with and focus on what's important to make sure you get to the right answer. Sometimes putting data into a visual representation like a Venn diagram can be really useful in helping you to understand and clarify things. So don't be afraid to use your whiteboard to do this. The third type of question that we see is recognizing assumptions. Here, you will have to figure out how strong an argument is and whether or not it provides a solution to the given problem. So let's take a look at another example question. Should squash be made an Olympic sport? Select the strongest argument from the statements below. A is yes. If tennis is an Olympic sport, then squash should be as well. B is yes. Squash is played in more than 185 countries and played by millions of people each week. C is no. There are already three racket sports, another would not add anything to the Olympic, or D is no. Millions of people do not enjoy watching squash. The game is too fast for spectators to enjoy. Pause the video here and try this yourself before we look at the answer. The correct answer is option B. This is because A is incorrect as while the argument is valid, it is not as strong as the fact-based argument presented in option B. B is correct because it's the only argument that provides a fact to back up the statement. It is played in many countries and by millions of people. C is incorrect as while the argument is valid and refers to the Olympics, the argument is weaker than the argument given in B. D is incorrect because the argument is not in relation to the Olympics. This type of question will require you to look at things objectively without putting any weight on your own beliefs or biases. Stronger arguments also tend to be the ones that are better explained and have reasons behind why they are doing something whereas weaker arguments will tend to rely more on assumptions as opposed to facts. The fourth question type is interpreting information. These questions also require objectivity and you cannot rely on your prior knowledge or experience. The answer must be supported only by information that is given to you in the data presented. Let's take a look at how you should tackle this type of question. The table shows the four levels of cognitive complexity that students of a particular course are expected to develop by the end of the course. Place yes if the conclusion does follow place no if the conclusion does not follow. Pause the video here before we move on to the answer. So the first conclusion does not follow because the ability to recall specific information is much simpler than other cognitive demands mentioned in the table. The second conclusion does not follow because the production of a rote response reflects proficiency in level B rather than level C. The third conclusion does follow because level D demands the ability to represent data. If a student is able to plot weather data on a graph, the student must be proficient in level D. The fourth conclusion does not follow because the ability to research over an extended period of time cannot be tested using traditional paper and pencil tests in a classroom environment. The fifth conclusion does follow because the ability to transfer or apply the concept of heat transfer to the context of building materials reflects proficiency in level A. In this section, you will be presented data in a variety of ways, including graphs, tables, and charts, and you will be expected to interpret these. Since there can be a lot of information, it can be helpful to quickly go through the answers to see the type of information or the data that you need to focus on. The fifth question type is Venn diagrams. For this type of question, you may be presented with text that will then be required to draw out as a Venn diagram, or you could be presented with a series of Venn diagrams and you have to choose the correct option. There are also three subtypes of Venn diagrams that you could be presented with. You can be given a Venn diagram and then asked to choose the best answer out of a list of options. You could be presented with a passage that can be interpreted as a Venn diagram 
and then asked to choose the best answer. Or you could be asked to choose one of the Venn diagrams as part of the answer and be provided with a list of statements that you'll have to interpret. So let's take a look at an example. The diagram gives information about the football teams a number of people had watched. Based on the diagram, which of the following statements is true? Take a minute to see if you can figure this one out. Okay, so the correct response is B. A is incorrect because the number of people who watched City is 7 plus 12 plus 8 plus 6, which is 33. And the number of people who did not watch City is 14 plus 5 plus 2 plus 13, which is 34. So fewer people watched City than did not watch City. B is correct because the total number of people who watch City is 7 plus 12 plus 8 plus 6 which is 33. And the total number of people who watched United is 14 plus five plus 12, which is 38. So fewer people watch City than watched United. C is incorrect because the total number of people who watched neither Rovers nor United is six plus 13, which is 19. D is incorrect because the total number of people who watched City is seven plus 12 plus eight plus six, which is 33. The number of people who watched United or Rovers is 14 plus five plus 12 plus seven plus two plus eight, which is 48. 33 is over half of 48. So the number of people who watched City was more than half the number who watched United or Rovers. So as you can see, including Venn diagrams as part of your preparation for the UCAT is essential in order for you to do well. The final question type is probabilistic reasoning. Here you will be presented with a passage of text containing statistical information. You will need to use your understanding of probability to choose the correct answer. You don't necessarily need advanced knowledge on statistics for this question type, but making sure that you brush up on your mental maths will be really helpful. Again, let's take a look at another example. Alice is a science consultant. She went to China to run a training session in English for Chinese science teachers about communication in science. Alice found that nine out of every 10 teachers she met there were keen to speak English. Alice wrote a report stating that 90% of Chinese science teachers were keen to speak English. Was this statement of Alice's justified? Take a minute to see if you can figure this one out. So the correct answer is D. A is incorrect because it doesn't address Alice's statement. B is incorrect because it is a comment about the source of data, not its validity. C is incorrect because as a properly taken sample, the answer would be yes. And D is correct because the 90% comes from a selection effect as non-English speakers would be much less keen to speak English. Now that we have gone through all six types of questions that you'll see in the decision making section, here are three top tips to really help you score in the highest deciles. Number one is to work smart. This means taking a second, take a step back to really figure out what the question is asking you and find out if you need to do any calculations or not. It can be very tempting to just start making a bunch of calculations as soon as you read the question, but just taking a moment to step back and take an overview of what you're being asked will help help you to identify what you need to calculate. Sometimes you won't need to calculate anything at all to get to the correct answer. Tip number two is to make use of your whiteboard. For this section of the UCAT, you will be able to use an online calculator as well as a whiteboard. These can be helpful for questions that require you to make some calculations or draw things out to visually represent data, as this will help you to answer the question. Make the most out of these when you need them, but be careful not to overuse them, as sometimes you could end up wasting more time than you need to. Tip number three is to revise probability, arithmetic, and Venn diagrams. One of the best ways to prepare for the decision making is to brush up on these skills and to prepare for mental maths and arithmetic questions. Having knowledge of these things will help you to understand the questions better and will allow you to arrive at the answer a lot quicker. Okay, so we have now reached the end of the decision-making overview. As you now know, the decision-making section has many different types of questions that you could be asked. It may be worth keeping track of the types of questions that you struggle with, as this can help you to structure your revision plan around your weakest areas. 
Joining a programme like FutureDoc is one of the best ways to get access to an unlimited number of questions, to keep track of your weak and your strong areas, and to come up with a personalised plan to help get you exam ready. Thank you so much for watching today. Please remember to like and subscribe to FutureDoc's channel if you found this useful and would like to see more. I will see you guys in the next video where we will be going through the situational judgement test.